And we're back. Off to the volcano. We'll just bring the same people we had last time. That seemed to work out. Yes, we are going to exploring. Yes. I don't remember. I know this volcano gets pretty deep after a while, you know, because like a lot of these dungeons, they only have you going down a few floors the first time, and then they add like one or one or two more the next time, and then they keep adding on to it. So I remember it getting pretty deep. Well, that can't be right. I mean, we're already seeing a lava up here. <laughs> yeah, I know. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Oh, so what? getting onto the technical side of things a little bit. So related to what? Related to uh, recording. Oh, okay. So you know how like one of the constant problems you've had over the years is that because we're putting on two computers and the timing on the clocks is like just slightly different, like the, the recordings don't perfectly line up. Yeah. So for anybody out there who's unaware of this, basically what happens is that if you have like a long recording on two different computers, um, they could be off by a couple of seconds over the course of the recording. Um, so, like, you start it off in sync, but by the end, one person's talking, and then the other person's responding, like, five seconds later, as opposed to right yeah. when they should have been. Yeah. Anyway, uh, one of the podcasters I listen to, he doesn't just do podcasting, he's also an app developer, and he made his own podcasting client. And now he's started making tools for helping podcasters. And one of the tools he made, actually, is this really neat little thing that it will scan audio files, like, two different audio files recorded on two different computers by two different people for the same, you know session of recording and it will identify um, basically similar sounds between both and is able to automatically synchronize the two files between each other wow that's pretty awesome so what it, the way it does it is that as it identifies that things are out of sync out of, out of sync with each other <laughs> it'll find little tiny gaps in between like when people are talking it will insert extra empty space there to help compensate or else we'll take out empty space from there to help it compensate Weird. And so you'll never actually hear any difference in the audio file because it's just adding or removing empty space. But suddenly it'll, it'll get everything lined back up again. Yeah, because I know I get tired of... There are some videos where it's, I have to splice all the time trying to get both of our audio synced. Although I haven't had that problem with this specific recorder, but yeah, it, it has... It's had its difficulties. I think that's why so many people don't like to have multiple people commentating. <laughs> yeah, well, or they try to do something else, like they'll record like the Skype call or something, that way it's just you're recording one thing, and they're all in sync. Yeah. But then the problem with the Skype call is... It, you gotta put you, up with Skype. Yeah, you gotta put up with Skype, and it can sound kind of bad, and... You know, the nice thing about the way we're doing things right now, actually, is that we don't even need internet connection to work, because, well, at least not a... Like, our, my, my home internet connection can fail, and we can still keep going, because we're using FaceTime for voice chatting. Yeah. In video, so we can fall back to the cellular networks when things go wrong, which has happened before in, in our recordings. Yeah, it has actually. I forgot about that. Yeah, and so we're able to keep on recording, and because I'm recording locally on my side, nothing goes out of the ordinary. It all just keeps working. Yeah, I really like doing FaceTime, actually, because that way you can see it live, hear everything, and you don't have to worry about lag. Yeah, oh, yeah lag was really bad when we were using, like, we tried Skype, we tried TeamViewer, we tried... Yeah, there was like a couple of videos that was so lagged. It was just like 20 minutes later, you read your line and you're like, oh no, I'm still talking. Yeah, so it was like early Squeak It In 1 videos. Yeah. Back when we didn't know what we were doing. Or, or like, yeah, or like Skype would lag behind. So, like, I would read something on time and then Skype would just kind of queue it up and be like, okay, I'm going to hang on to what you said. And then, like, yeah. 10 or 15 seconds, I'm going to play back the last 10 or 15 seconds of things you said really, really fast. But I'm kind of excited that we'll be. Play Sweeping Game 3 next. You haven't played a Sweeping Game in a while. I, I'm looking forward to it. Although, I keep saying it, you and I need to sit down and finally finish off the last of my playthroughs. Yeah, the last, like, five minutes. <laughs> yeah, we still haven't done, like, the last five minutes. Like, we've got all 108. Like, we just need to do the last five minutes. And we're done. Yeah. I'm it, just hoping that, you know, once our schedule's becoming more normal, because, like, we've only been recently been able to start recording weekly like we used to. Hopefully mm -hmm. we'll be able to do like more videos in an evening to keep it going. 
Yeah, I, I, I'm hoping so too. Well, and plus, it's kind of nice actually having you on Pacific time nowadays because yeah, I'm I'm used to staying up a bit later. Although now that I have a wife, she's like, no, you shouldn't stay up super late recording. I'm like, yeah. oh, dang it. <laughs> now I'm the one who can't stay up. Late. <laughs> I didn't get a laugh at that, but I mean, we'll we'll definitely have to get ahead on our on our recordings at some point here, though, because I think I know I have vacation lined up for around Christmas and Thanksgiving and all that stuff. I have no more vacation this year, but um, I'm not probably going to be going on any vacations the next at least the next year. So I can save a vacation days to do like a whole day of recording. That'd be awesome. Well, you you actually introduced me to cruising. And I'm yes. finally going to get a chance to introduce my wife to going on a cruise. Oh, oh yeah, did y'all get a... I forgot y'all planned a cruise. Yeah, we, we are going on a cruise the week before Christmas this year. Sounds like fun. It is. Yeah, we're, we're doing a Caribbean cruise, and so we're like, oh, good, the Caribbean during winter. Like, that'll be nice. Yeah, I've been during the winter time, and um, a lot of people think it's going to be boring, but actually it's not. There's still a lot to do. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was giving her a hard time, though, because we're going to go see some Mayan ruins while we're down there. Not like the ones that Helper and I saw when we were down there. Um, <laughs> for our viewers, the, uh, the, the mind runes that Helper and I saw when we were on a cruise together. Uh, we, we, you basically walked down this the only street in the town. And at the end of the street, there was a, oh, yeah. there was a roundabout, <laughs> like a traffic circle. And in the middle of the roundabout was like a little mound about 20 feet tall. Yeah, I was like, what are y'all talking about? What are you talking about? Oh, yeah, I remember that now. Yeah, that was, that was, he, he, the helper and I were, like, looking sideways the entire time we were walking through this town, too. He's like, this little tiny town, and, like, every one of the locals was looking at us like, they they look like outsiders. Like, we just felt like, okay, we do not want to be here. We are definitely out of place right now. Like, what are we doing here? I don't remember why I wasn't with y'all. I can't remember. Uh, I think we had done like a whole little walk in the day before or something, so you felt like relaxing. Yeah, I, I think that's what it was. So, who was it? So, back in like, they had like an area that was clearly into tourists, like at the start of that road. And, uh, it's like all the tourists were there, like all the cruise people were there. They had a lion, a, a lion cub inside of a baby's crib. I, yeah, I remember you telling me that. And, uh, it was like, you know, $20 to get a photo with the lion type of thing. But it was just this, it's, it wasn't actually, I shouldn't say cub, it was like bigger than a cub, smaller than an adult. It's like in between, it's like, you know, juvenile. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I, I missed it, but I think at dinner that night, your sister was talking with us at the dinner table, and she was like, oh man, did you guys see the lion? I was like, oh yeah, I saw the lion. She was like, did you see it get out? <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> Turned out that, like, five minutes after I left, the lion cub jumped out of the crib and just took off. And, like, the photography lady that was, like, charging people 20 bucks, you know, went chasing after the lion cub to try and catch it. And everybody else was just like, this can't be safe. <laughs> it was it was an interesting place to be, to say the least. I probably won't be going on a cruise for a while because of helper schedule. But if I do go on one next, I want to go on an Alaskan cruise. That'd be good. Since I'm on the West Coast now, at least I don't have to fly very far. Mm-hmm. It's true. Oh my gosh, now that I don't have anybody to go in these stupid tiny caves, there's a whole bunch of them. So yes, yeah, so we're doing the cruise in December, and then we're actually talking about maybe going over to Europe in uh, summer next year. Ooh, that's exciting. I don't think I've ever been to Europe. I've been to Japan. Yeah. Which is amazing. <laughs> My, uh, I my geography. My my brother has a so he was visiting us a couple of weeks ago and and he was saying. Um, Ooh, I don't know. Hold on, I don't know if we've seen this. It's a ripper that's called Joker. What are they called? I can't remember. Assassin rippers. Yes. <laughs> I had one of those in my monster rancher. It's like oh yeah. My favorite monster. Or one of them. Anyway, he's apparently been outside the country though for work, like. I think he said that the first 200 days of the year he'd been out, out of the country 100 of those days. Wow. And so he actually had to get a work visa for the for for France, I think. Or I didn't any- know he had a job. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's been working full-time for a couple of years. Oh, just yeah, I know. much I know. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't Sorry, know. Sorry, I know that's kind of bad. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, he's he's actually had stable work. He's he's been working at the same company for five years now, full time for at least three or four. Um, and he's only 
doing very, very well there. But uh, with that much flying, though, comes a whole lot of airline points and hotel points. And so he was like, yeah, so if you guys want to go, like, anywhere in the world, <laughs> it's on me. And he was like, I'm telling mom and dad the same thing. They can go anywhere, too. Like, I can cover both okay. of you guys. I was going to say, I was wondering, because you were telling me that you weren't sure how you were going to do the cruise at first, and now you're telling me you're going to Europe, and I'm like, you must have gotten a promotion you didn't tell me about. Yeah, no, that, that's what it is. I got, a, I got my oh lucky my break. What is this? <laughs> what in the world? <laughs> I'm like, going down, I was like, it's another turn in the road, it's another turn in the road, it's another stupid cave and a turn in the road. <laughs> Oh my goodness, alright. We're gonna go south. That sounds like it's more interesting. No, we need to go left! Oh look, a dead end. I called that one. Haha, uh -huh. treasure chest. It's bad Come on, something end. good! Oh, it's bad when a dead end is more interesting. <laughs> yeah. Whee. Oh no! Staring at that for two days at work. Now loading. I was working on, I was working on this report, and I added one line of code. And my report took 45 seconds to run before I added the line of code. And after I added it, it took 12 minutes. And so I was like, you know what? I'm pretty sure I can't check that in because my coworker is gonna come. He's gonna get on a plane and come and like hit me in the face if I turn that in. <laughs> but I didn't realize my line of code did that the first time, and I was just like, "Oh my gosh, is this ever gonna load?" Like I got so bored of waiting, I didn't know what was going on. I was like, "It's it's doing something." But in the end, I got my report to run in 48 seconds, which was still way too slow. I should have had it any time. So after two meetings today, we decided that I'm not gonna do anything. <laughs> gonna delete my work. <laughs> but it was pretty much a day and a half of watching the now loading thing come up. It was boring. We, uh, we had this window that I had worked on and it went from taking 22 seconds to load to taking 52 seconds to load. Oh gosh! <laughs> and uh, and they were like, well we need this feature and you can't you can't check it in that way so you gotta fix, you gotta fix this. And so I was like, okay. So I looked into it and I realized, oh, I did like one stupid little thing, I can fix that quickly. And so, same type of thing, changed one line of code and suddenly it went back to taking 22 seconds. And I was like, great, but then I was like, it seems silly that this thing is taking 22 seconds to load in the first place. Like, why is it taking 22 seconds? And so yeah. I got permission and I went ahead and looked into it and managed to knock it from 22 seconds down to 0.2 seconds. Wow. By changing, I bet like, your users were happy. Yeah, I changed like five lines of code, but unfortunately it's still like a beta version of the software that's not been released publicly yet, so our users are like three people that work at the company that we have as our <laughs> client, so. Or the, the, the current users, I should say, like three people. The older versions of our stuff that have already been released have like tens of thousands of users, but yeah, the current stuff is actually it's not even in beta, it's in alpha still, technically, so yeah, it's three or four people that get to use it. Yeah, a lot of my viewers who probably aren't um, computer people, y'all are probably thinking, man, three seconds, you know, you're being picky, but that's a lot of time in the computer world, because no in my case, I was only running the report for, for one, uh, one store, and in, like, real life, you run it for, like, hundreds at once, and so if you add three second times a hundred, you know, that's how many seconds you're adding, and so, yeah, it's, it's, it's funny how... It seems silly to a lot of people who aren't in the field, but it's a big deal. Because I know, I know one of my friends, Potter, she's a music teacher, so she's, she's not the techiest person in the world. She's still pretty techie, but, you know, I was talking to her on the phone when I was trying to fix it, and she's like, it's only three seconds, and I'm like, yeah, but that's three more seconds you'd have to wait for. Do you want to wait three seconds? And she goes, I guess I don't. <laughs> every single time. Yeah, every single time you want to do this. Ooh, I got a new ability. Alright, Calb. I can't believe we're doing this well. Like, honestly, I wasn't kidding. I remember failing this dungeon so many times when I was younger. I can't really say when I was a kid, because I think I played this when I was in high school. I can't remember, because Sweet 3 and Monster Rancher 5 are bleh, EVO. I can never get that right. They came out around the same time, because I remember... Speaking of three, like their mouths would move and they'd have expressions, and Monster Hunter EVO they didn't. And I remember thinking, oh man, this is annoying because I went from one to the other like immediately. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I, I had to because I played I played 
EVO and Suikoden 3 when I was in college. But yeah, I, I guess I just feel like I was a kid that far back. <laughs> I remember how excited I was when Suikoden 3 came out. My roommate's like, you were totally nuts. And she'd be like, it's 2 in the morning, go to bed! The normals just don't understand. <laughs> I remember when Suikoden 5 came out. That was a nightmare. I told my project group that when Suikoden 5 came out, I wanted a week off from working. And it was actually, like, in the agreement I had with my group. Oh yes, we got a tablet! About time. Finally! Um, which means we gotta make it out of here. Uh, so yeah, I asked them and they said, yeah, sure, you can have a week off from the project when the game comes out. Unfortunately, the game was delayed, and when it finally came out, it was during the testing phase of our project, and I said, well, I'll be back in a week, and they said, you can't leave now, and I said, but that was our agreement. And they got so mad at me. Oh my god, it was a huge nightmare. And I'll always remember that, because I thought they were gonna honor their agreement, and they totally didn't. And I got the lowest grade in the group, even though I wrote the most code and did the most work. It's just because I, l I didn't test it, apparently. <laughs> well, wasn't that the was that the one that was the arthritis one? That was the large scale projects class, where the only homework and the only anything in the class was one project. There was no tests, no homework, no quizzes, nothing. It was one giant project he worked on the whole semester, and it was a um, medical program. So you registered once and like all the hospitals and all the doctors and everything in the area technically log in and see your information so you didn't have to fill out forms every single time you went somewhere. And um, because I was studying computer human interaction, that seemed like the perfect time for me to explore all these things. So I had implemented things other groups hadn't like um, if you, we added an ability to scan a number and if there were allergens or big major problems, a big red box would show up and say this person's allergic to blah or this person has a pacemaker, you know, and so you would know immediately because if you were an ER registered user or like a surgeon kind of user, it would come up with these warnings immediately when you logged into a person. Like to log in to see one of your customers and stuff like that. So we 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 beat out everybody by quite a bit. <laughs> but it was it was a fun until the end. It was fun until all my team turned on me because they got so drunk that they couldn't remember why I wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> Which is another reason why I don't drink. That incident was really obnoxious. And then of course when I demanded my project back, I didn't get that back either. <laughs> Uh, good old a &M University. <laughs> I just had bad luck being a female in the computer science field a lot too. That that usually worked against me back then. That was that was quite a while ago. I'm pretty sure it's improved now. Hopefully so. Hopefully it keeps improving. Yeah, I hope so. Because you know people keep going around saying, "Oh no, women are still equal," and I'm like, "No, they're not actually." It wasn't until just last year that they actually equaled my payout to my male counterparts. Like, they actually pretty much told me the reason I was getting such a huge pay hike was because they, the company, it was a company-wide policy that we all had to be paid the same amount. Hmm. And I got this giant raise, <laughs> which was ridiculous. However, what was it? It was like 8% or something? 8 or 9? It was something ludicrous. Nice. But because I asked and I said I usually only get like a 1.5 or two, and they were like, "Oh well." <laughs> for the amount of work you're doing, or for the type of work you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that was nice of the company, though. They really are trying to to be, you know, all for equality and everything. Although, which reminds me, <laughs> it was so hilarious. Last year we had one of those ethics papers. You know, they're like, "Oh, read the paper and take the quizzes." You know, and. Standard stuff, which, you know, it's not a problem. Every com big company does it. But what was hilarious was every page it told you what not to do, there was a picture of a woman. And every page it told you what to do was a picture of a man. And I was kind of upset, but I realized, you know, I'm sure what happened was in their mind, they were just like, oh, let's alternate between men and women. But they didn't realize they were al also alternating between bad and good. And so I was like, well, I'm pretty sure it was an accident. But I should probably let them know before somebody actually gets upset by this. So I, I emailed HR, or whoever gave us the, the ethics thing, and I told them what happened. <laughs> and they were like, they emailed me back about a week or so later, and they apologized. And they said, we had a couple other people comment on this and we will fix it we, we apologize profusely it was an accident so when we got ours this year they they mixed it up 
That is good. Yeah, and they actually fixed it. And I was actually a little surprised that they did it. But I, that's what I like about my company. They really do try to be to be fair all the time. So I've never known them to be jerks. Well, it, it's interesting. Like a lot of times, people kind of just do things without realizing they did it. You know? Yeah. Or, or they just keep going about something that existed a certain way, and they don't think about like why it existed that way. So the uh, the church that I go to in town. Not I'm not bringing religion to this. It just happens to be a church. <laughs> it uh. They had, like, the phone numbers of, like, important people in the church that you could contact them. Yeah. They didn't have any area codes for most of the people in the list. <laughs> now, this is... We're recording this in 2016. Most people have cell phones nowadays, which require that you type in area codes. And even some cities are so big, they have multiple area codes. And even... Now, mind you, the one I live in is not. It has a single area code. But still, that that's kind of besides the point. It's just kind of one of those things where it's like, we live in a college town, which means that, like, half the people here are from outside of this place. Yeah. And so just one of the things where it's like, maybe it would be a good idea to add area codes. And so we, we all hintedly <laughs> mentioned it to the to the secretary, and she was like, that's a good idea. Let me go ahead and do that. <laughs> but you just kind of kind of wonder. It's like, it's probably been that way for a decade, two decades. Like, how long has it been that way? Like, that, like, 90% of the people on this list don't even have an area code because they're all the local area code. Yeah, so I just got a sight scroll, and I don't know what that is. <laughs> It was down at the bottom of the first one. Oh, it was? Okay. Oh! Use and combining to regenerate a monster with the trait 4C. Interesting. Hmm. Interesting. I foresee that we'll be looking that up. <laughs> so going back to, just for a quick second, to the topic of shaving time off of like UI design and stuff like that. Oh yeah. I remember hearing a story actually about the early days of the Mac computer being developed like back in the early 1980s, and how the computer was booting up pretty quickly, but still not fast enough for Steve Jobs. And so he demanded that they make it boot faster. And uh, I think he said something like, you know, try to get it booting 10 seconds faster, basically. Like, take 10 seconds off. And the team was like, yeah, yeah, whatever. You know, we'll do that, sure. And they weren't quite getting it done, so he came back and was like, you know what, I've been thinking about some more. I bet that 5 million people are going to use this computer. If each of them reboots it once a day, that's, you know, 15 million seconds a day that gets saved. Multiply that by a year. He's like, you know what? You're probably saving dozens of lives worth of time every year. <laughs> Think about it. You're saving dozens of lives every year if you do this. And the team was like, okay. <laughs> Look. But still, it is kind of one of those neat ideas to kind of put it in that perspective and be like, you know what? Like, this change I'm making, it's, it's not saving somebody's life, but it's saving a life worth of time. Yeah. That's how I feel about, you know, when you go to a store and they're like, donate a dollar. And I'm like, well, if everyone donates a dollar, you know, they get some outrage. And of course, I made that speech to help her back when we were dating, because he's like, it's only a dollar. I'm like, but if you give a dollar, and everyone gives a dollar. <laughs> so, of course, now every time we go somewhere, I have to kind of donate a dollar, because it's like, dang it, talk myself into that corner. Yeah, I, I tend not to donate to kind of those would you give a dollar causes, because I already donate to a lot of other things that I purposely set aside money for. It depends on the cause. There's certain causes I always donate to. Ooh! It's green! What is that? A fossil. It's a fossil. Okay, I honestly don't remember what to do with this, because I doubt a Neaton's gonna pop out, which would be freaking awesome! Oh my gosh, it'd be so exciting, but I'm pretty sure Neatons are not in this game, because I think they're only in Monster Rancher 2, which I'm not playing! <laughs> it's funny how many- it's funny how many Let's Plays there are of Monster Rancher 2, because I haven't done one. Calb! Excuse me, Calb! Calb, get out of the way! It's kind of like there's a whole bunch of Let's Plays of Quest for Glory 3, because Late Blight never did one. Maybe it's just one of those cases, though, where you didn't do one, so you're more aware of the ones that people have done. Well, I actually looked up other LPs for Monster Rancher one day, and I noticed that there were quite a few of Monster Rancher 2. And I don't know if that's just because... I think I, I, like a lot of people have commented that it was also the first one to hit the UK, so a lot of people remember that one fondly, because mm. it was a lot of times the first one they played. Um, so it might be chalked up to that, but... I'm pretty sure it is, actually. <laughs> but, 
But I get people messaging me all the time saying, Oh, I'm going to do Monster Hunter 2 LP. And I'm like, good, because <laughs> you're braver than me. <laughs> Ooh, we defeated the, the boss. I didn't even realize that was the boss. I thought he looked different. Like a mini boss, I guess I should say. Because I was sitting there thinking, like, what kind of tiger is that? I don't think it's part dragon. Energy's going down though. I'm kind of worried. I was just like, gosh, it's been going on for so long. Sorry, I'm trying to look up Nita. Oh, you are? Of course. Like. The only reason I remember that is because that's the monster I had that finally beat Monster Rancher 2 for me. You know, I've actually been thinking about playing Monster Rancher 2 again recently. I'm not going to record it. I just kind of was thinking I might try playing it until I get frustrated. But unfortunately, I don't think it's going to be a little while. I think it's going to be a while because I'm playing WoW right now. Uh, Legion expansion, and then uh, Disney's Magical Adventure 2 comes out next month. I know that sounds silly, but I really like that game. Well, at least the first one. And then, of course, Marvel Sun and Moon's coming out. There's too many games coming out. That's what happens in October. It feels like all the good games come out in October. Okay, I'm having trouble finding it. N I T A N? How do you spell it? O N. O N. Niton. Neaton. Okay, that's why I couldn't find anything anywhere. I was like, what am I, what am I missing? Yeah, I don't, I don't know how to actually pronounce it. Because I don't think it was even... I don't think Neatons were even in the show. Uh, I'm trying to look them up because I don't remember what they are. They're like little... Oh... Fudge Munch. What are they called? Helper, what are those things that swim backwards? Ammonite? No. Nautilus. Nautilus, Nautilus. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I see it hit the thing that swims backwards. <laughs> uh, I need to go back to the aquarium, apparently. I can't remember anything. They did show up in the anime series. Really? Which yes. episode? That's a great question. Um, Dang. He apparently shows up as a monster peddler who travels around Pangea selling items. He has a very crooked personality and apparently steals whatever he can't buy. Aw, that doesn't sound very nice. Looks like he might be, might be season two, I'm not sure. I haven't watched it in so long. I wonder if it's like streamable from any location, because I pretty much have everything by this point. If it is, I'd be surprised. I, I, I was gonna say I, I may have procured a copy of it a while ago. Hey, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. And I still have. You like, already told that. Yeah, and I, I still have like a third of the episodes I need to finish because like I got about as far as I ever got whenever it was airing on Fox Kids, like Saturday morning cartoons or whatever. Back, back when we had Saturday morning cartoons. Yeah, back when Saturday morning cartoons were things. So I got about I got about that far, but that's it. This looks ominous. You think it's gonna be the end of the tunnel? I think it's gonna be a dragon. I What's your guess? Click. Lava. No, it's gotta be a monster. Oh, Aww, it's part dragon. <laughs> Unless this is not actually the new boss, because I assume there's gonna be one. And you know what happens when you assume. 